Join me, 48 Hours Correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Erin Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, come on outside. We want to show you something. Hey, everybody. I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 462. Let's get outside with Perfect porch, patio, and deck decor ideas. We are so excited to get outside and give you all sorts of ideas about how you can make your spaces more beautiful and more user-friendly. Let's dive into the episode today. It is a listener request episode. Well, and as it warms up in the spring, nothing sounds better to me than getting outside and enjoying the beautiful weather. You know, you've been cooped up all winter And it's just so exciting to go outside and feel that fresh air and breathe in the air and see the beautiful flowers. It's really an exciting time, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Even though it's really beautiful here most of the year, we had our rainy season. And then to be honest with you guys, like by August or July and August, it gets so hot. I'm probably not going to be sitting out in my yard. So there really is this, you know, maybe on my front porch, but not in the backyard. So there is this sort of like beautiful window of opportunity. It's not that much to do to really spruce up your outdoor space. This is the time of year where I love to be out in my backyard. I have planted this um, pink-throated jasmine to climb up this uh, sort of wire mesh that I've attached between some pillars all along the side yard, and it is in full bloom right now. It smells so good. I mean, I'm just so delighted that it's actually working. It seems like it takes a while for the jasmine to get rolling, but once it starts rolling, it grows. Uh, you know, it seems like while you're watching it, it's growing and I'm weaving it in and out of the, the uh, wire mesh. And it's it's really making a wall of jasmine. It's beautiful right now. That grows pretty fast too. Yeah. So that's been great. So that really gets me out in the yard this time of year. I need to do some things in my yard. So I'm excited to hear Anita's tips and also to incorporate some of the ones that I have found in my research for this episode. Okay. Well, I wanted to just kind of start from the beginning. The first thing, go on your porch, your deck, whatever area we're talking about, Pretend like you're a visitor and just walk around and just notice everything that you don't normally look at. And that's when you're going to see what needs to be cleaned, what looks neglected. Um, I think you're going to pick up a lot of ideas on what needs to be done just from taking a very close look at everything and taking some pictures. That's a great point. I mean, I love that tip and I use that tip now that you told me about taking the pictures. I didn't really consider it out for outside. And I think that that is probably a great idea. I'm going to do that. Decorate your outdoors like it's an actual room. There are plenty of outdoor materials that mimic the decor that we have inside. You know, it may be made of something different, like maybe a resin material, but it might look like a settee that you could have inside. Accessorize it, all these things. So we'll go into the details and what we mean by all that. But yes, most certainly think of your outdoor space as you would a room inside. And another way to think about your outdoor space with respect to a room, if it's a large space or sort of a very flat square or rectangle type of suburban backyard, try to think about how you can break it up into, air quotes, rooms, different areas, (laughs) different destination areas. Because in it will actually make the space look bigger rather than if it's just this wide swath of grass uh, with, you know, maybe a few chairs uh, in the center. If you break it up, it's going to have more interest. It's going to actually live larger. You'll have areas that you go for certain activities. Maybe you have a barbecue area. Maybe you have a hammock where you read, or maybe then you maybe have a an area with some sort of little fire pit and some chairs around it, something like that. Think about how you can break up that space into rooms. And then if you have a smaller space, 
you might say to yourself, oh, breaking it up, that's a bad idea. It's going to make it look smaller. But I'm telling you, trust me, it's going to make it feel bigger. Well, and it's just more usable that way Mm -hmm. because you want to think about how are you going to use it. So on our back porch at the farm, I have a dining room and a living room, basically. And that's the way I've done it. So we actually, I know this is very weird and not normal, but I have a china cabinet on my back porch and a long wooden table. And on the other end of the porch, I have more seating and rocking chairs. And I have a little crib that I use to put a cushion on. And we use that for seating as well. And actually, anyway, I don't want to get too far into that. But, you know. No, but it's, but it's a <laughs> magical space. And I mean, if anybody f- has followed your blog, seen your pins on Pinterest, on your Instagram, that is a spectacular space. And I know you sort of joke like, oh, it, that's weird. I have a China account and stuff like that. But that's what makes the space so interesting and fabulous because you didn't buy a couple of folding chairs at Target or Home Depot that look like outdoor chairs and unfold them and plop them in the, uh, on the porch and call it a day. You styled it in a way that enhances not only the space itself, but ha- that has this flow with your inside and out. So in a sense, also extending your square footage, like claiming that outdoor space as usable space and that p- it's part of your whole home. You know, interestingly, you know, you're talking about that and our space is not usable in inclement weather if the rain is go- going sideways or if it's too cold. And so one of the things we're going to do uh, it's certainly on my list, although this is going to take me a while to find it, are to put in, have you ever been to a restaurant where they have an outdoor seating area and when it's raining, they have those, or if it's cold, they have those uh, vinyl uh, sheets that go around the area? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, I'm I'm looking into buying some of those and they actually go kind of on a wire uh-huh. and they kind of go like curtains. Uh, I mean, that's one way you can buy them. So I'm actually going looking into buying some of those for our our porch. So I think that it'll, it'll, because our porch in bad weather becomes a wind tunnel. Right. right. So, you know, that's something to think about now, you know, as it, as it cools off, we're probably not going to be, or warms up, excuse me, you're probably not going to be needing that too much, but uh, yeah, it's just something that just made me think of it. That's something I'm going to be working on. Yeah. I mean, if you're creating these beautiful spaces, you definitely want to take that sort of thing into consideration. Like, oh, you might be decorating out there in April and it's 60 some odd degrees, but what's it going to feel like out here in July? So maybe you need more umbrellas or maybe you would consider creating some sort of pergola or something like that to give you some shade. So those are all things that you should just obviously need to take into consideration because you're also outside. Right. But not just for taking into account for when you're using the space. But if if, for, if you have uh, some things out there that need some protection from the elements, mm-hmm. you might think about uh, or how exposed they are going to be to rain and sun and wind uh, and just make sure that, you know, the pieces you have out there are protected enough for whatever kind of protection they need. Mm-hmm. Is Because, you know, like, for example, we had a um, kind of a, a dress around the front porch that was painted and everything. And it got so much sun. It just, we pulled the drawer out as we were cleaning and it just fell. It just collapsed. So we had to get rid of that. But the China cabinet on the back porch has fared very well. Now I've painted that with outdoor paint, but also it does not get the sun and the, the wind and the rain like the front porch did. So just keep in mind, you know, how protected your area is. Yeah. And if you want to use items like that, and you're okay with it living with you for about a season or two, if you thrift something and it costs you 10 bucks or something like that, then maybe you don't care. And you'd love to have it out there and you can use it as uh, some sort of you know bar station or a side table or something like that. Go for it. And if it lasts for a little while, it lasts for a little while. And then you could always find another table for five bucks or something and have it in its place. I've, I've had the same thing where I've had something out in the sun and all of a sudden it's like warped and whatever. But I mean, you know, it was a great potting table or something for a couple of seasons. I would say if you can avoid the real outdoor looking plastics, there's so many materials, metals, cement, aluminum, resins, uh, wicker that's a, a resin-like material. There's so many nice outdoor 
materials now that are not really that expensive. So you just don't have to get those sort of metal, uh, excuse me, plastic stacking chairs and things like that. You can really take it up a notch for not much more. Well, and we have a real wood table on our back porch. And the secret is um, when it's not in use, we put a tarp on it so the rain isn't getting to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know but that's a little more high maintenance. So, you know, just keep right. in mind what you're willing to do as well. Exactly. Something that we did is I thrifted a metal table with six metal chairs and it didn't come with a top. And I always thought, oh, I'll get a glass piece of glass cut, but the glass outside, I've had glass tables that I've kept outside and, you know, that's a pain in the neck. You have to keep wiping it off. It doesn't always looks good and the pollen and all of that. So we made a cement top for it. So just had a wooden frame made and poured the cement in and made it right on top of the table. And that's been awesome. Oh, wow. That and it didn't cost gorgeous. very much money at all to do that. I mean, we had somebody help us on the weekend do it. Uh, the table now weighs probably about 400 pounds. Yeah, you're not <laughs> so moving it. Yeah, I'm glad I just, I, I like where we decided to put it because it's really not going anywhere. But that was a great way to go. You're not so putting sliders under that thing? Oh, no, no sliders. That'd be so <laughs> funny. You're just a little dishcloth, drag it across the lawn. Um, but lots of times when I'm out at yard sales and things like that, you see metal outdoor tables. And, and usually they have a little rust on them, something which, you know, I don't have to tell you how you can cure that with a little spray paint, not a big deal. And then you can make the cement top and it's so cool. It looks really very modern and fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have some down by the Creek that, um, are going to have to be, you know, it just, unless you really keep on top of maintaining them and some of these pieces down by our Creek, we haven't, I mean, they're just only going to last so long. So I'm, I'm getting ready to replace a table down there. So, yeah. So you do have to keep, be aware of the, you know, what the exposure is going to be to the elements. Try salvage things in your yard. Like we're saying, you know, things that you can thrift or it doesn't have to be like a table or something like that. You could just find a cool piece of salvage metal, an old gate, something like that. That is such a fun thing to add to your garden and have it little, little area of interest. Maybe you can grow a vine on it or something like that, or create a little cutting garden in front of it. If you have a heavy a gate or a piece of fencing, you can even put, dig a trench and then put some cement in and some, you make sure that it doesn't tilt or fall over. That's what we did in the front of our house because there was a lot of um, old metal uh fencing and gate material that was left here by the prior owner. And he had intended to circle the whole house with it, but I wanted to just use a little bit of it kind of like in homage to his idea, but I didn't want to use all of it all around the house. So we just put it in the front in, on two sides of the walkway uh, with some uh, metal pillars on either side and sort of gave it an accent and created a an area of a, a garden in front of it. So that's a fun thing to do. And you can find those kinds of items at a lot of um, either estate sales, thrift stores, yard sales, things like that. Salvage yards is a great place to go for stuff like that. Right. And this is the time to be looking also at your front doormat and your back doormat. How do they look? This they is the look time to look at those things. You're absolutely right. Well, I mean, just look at no them. No better they... time. Well, I mean, if they don't look good, I mean, they're so inexpensive to replace. And now such a great time. So, I mean, some people probably do this every year, but uh, yeah, this is a great time to go look. And it's so many, there's so many pretty ones that have lots of color. So, you know, go, go for something fun if you want something kind of whimsical. I think that's a great way to just make it look fresh and fun and, and inviting at your house. And, and while you're doing that, I just started thinking about what about an outdoor rug? I love that look. And there's so many beautiful outdoor rugs available. I actually had an extra rug from inside the house left over and it was an outdoor rug made to look like sisal. And so I just put that under our dining room table out on the back porch. So anyway, we'll see how it, how it goes, but it's made for the outdoors. So I think it'll hold up, you know, for a while. I really want to do that on our patio. So in our yard, we have the backyard, we have uh, some grass area and then we have a bricked patio area. And that's where we have the outdoor seating and whatnot. And I thought that would be so great because it, a rug does so much in an outdoor space because, you know, it's, 
it's the great outdoors for a reason. It's big. Even if you don't have a big, you don't think you have a big yard, you know, it's open to the sky. There's, there's no confines. So you try to like humanize the scale so people can feel comfortable. You know how people always want to be in the smaller space, right? So I think a rug outside, not only does it anchor your area and create a natural area for your chairs and coffee table and things like that to go, but it also sort of humanizes the scale. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, um, but it's also a great way to add some color and, and pattern to the space Yeah, well. so it's doing a lot for you. I just, I'm hesitant to buy one because the sun beats down so hard in my backyard. I really want, and, and a rug of the size that I need, they're not that cheap. So I oh. really want to make sure, if you have any recommendations on ones that you know have really withstood the elements. Well, you might I go with something that. that's not bright colors then, so that if it fades, you know, yeah. it's not going to be so obvious. That's a good point. Yeah. The fading would not look so good. And like you said about the doormats and stuff, honestly, I think very few things look as cruddy as like those core rugs that have seen better days. Yes. You know, it's like that. It's just telltale yuck. You know, just get rid of that. Throw it out. Start And over. that's the thing that I know for me, I my brain just ignores it until someone's coming over and oh. I just happen to glance over and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that looks The cool. greatest motivator is someone coming over. Yes. But I mean, I sure. don't even notice it though the rest of the time. It's not like I'm saying, you know, oh, I'm not going to do that. It's like, right. I don't even, my brain just doesn't even focus on it. Yeah. So how about porch curtains? I love this idea. And actually, I had put up some railings. I was going to do that at our farm. But then I realized that it was so windy that the curtain I am not making, it was horse, It was completely horizontal. It was oh like we gosh. were flying a flag. Take it easy, Dorothy. Yeah, We couldn't do it. But I love the look. If you don't have too much wind, I think it would be beautiful. Well, I made those for the one side of our porch. And I just had a metal, like a plumbing pipe that we bought. A conduit, probably conduit. Could be a conduit engineer lady. Yeah. Um, And (laughs) and then the metal pole conduit, it ran from either side to side. And then I have the metal um, holders. Like you, they were like industrial style ones that you would have. Yeah. That's what I was. That's what I used. Yeah. So that's fine. And then I made the curtains out of drop cloths. And you know, you guys, I'm not. A I did the same. Sewer. That's what I did too. I, Don't we, copy me. Stop it. This was this was years. <laughs> well, this was years ago. I didn't. Oh, then end I up, copied you. No, no, For no. Sure. I never put them up because I had the problem with the wind. So, uh, yeah, yeah, mine so worked. Had- mine worked out very nicely. And it and again, it kind of even though my porch is not gigantic, it just kind of like makes it cozier. And I don't have it on both sides. And, uh, you know, I hope my neighbors on the one side aren't like, Hey, why did they put the curtains on one side and not the other? Like, what's wrong with us? But it just, it goes behind the, the love seat. And so it just kind of encloses the area, particularly if you're out there at night. It's really lovely. Um, so if you can even do that on a porch or you could do that in your backyard, that would be pretty spectacular. Um, lighting makes a tremendous difference. What a great place to put lighting. And, you know, my favorite are the string lights. And so many okay. of those are made for outdoor use. So if you that's such a haven't thing. done it yet, and if you can in any way, shape, or form, add some of those cafe lights, you know, the ones that have the small round bulbs, uh, not just Christmas lights. The cafe lights lend a whole different feel. And right. when you put those on in the evening, it is just magical. Oh my goodness. It's beautiful. Yeah. No matter what size you have, if you could just run something from one side to the other and maybe even zigzag it back and forth. And if you've got electric there, you are good to go. There are some great options on Amazon. That's where I got mine from. And we put them up. Gosh, it was for Laura's 13th birthday and now she's 16. So they've been and up for still three years. Up. And I really thought, well, you will put these up for the party and then we'll take them down. No, no, no. They are up for good. I, I put them on almost every night, even though I have to walk outside to the barn to turn them on and off, which see, if I had thought this is going to be something I'm going to keep for forever, I would have had the, the forward thought to say, let's put some sort of light switch on the inside or make it so I could do something. There's probably some way I can do that, but you know, so, I don't know, maybe some uh, timer, maybe something like that. So oh, I don't have yeah, to keep going outside. Timer. Yeah. So maybe do that if you're doing it and you could maybe put them on a timer. It's so nice just to have them go on when it's dusk. 
and go off at like 10 or 11. So nice. I love that idea. But let's, but if you don't have a place for the string lights, if you don't have electricity, candles and lanterns are a great idea. And the reason the lanterns are such a wonderful idea for the candles is because it does block the wind. See, I'm to focus on the wind. It's going to keep your candles yeah. from going out because of the wind. So lanterns are a great way to, uh, you know, allow, and the light, um, uh, magnifies the the glass magnifies the light from the the flame as well so that's another thing to do and you know what i did my friend had an old chandelier that she was throwing away and i said can i have that and i cut off the the electrical uh connections and then i glued on some little uh glass the little votive holders, the little glass votive holders, right. and I put little um, tea lights in it and hung it as from a chain on, on my, in my dining room, on my back porch. Oh, I just love that. That's so charming. So there's a lot of things you can do, uh, even if you don't have electricity back there. That's so true. And you could even do those battery operated lights. I wouldn't leave them out there. You know, you know, maybe overnight would be fine, but I wouldn't leave them out for long term, even overnight. You know, it gets dewy and the batteries might get funky, but you could definitely use those for parties or just, you know, go outside and have it. Here's the thing about having your situation outside. If it's going to be a hassle every time and you got to drag all this stuff out and like sort of clean it, I mean, you know, you might have to wipe something down or something, but if you're going to make an outdoor space, it would be so great if it would just be easy for you to use it. So when yes. you're thinking about your space, we're, we're giving you all sorts of ideas. You know, some may work for you, some may not. But if you can situate it where, you know, in your mind, you say, I'm not going to be a slave to my outdoor pillows or cushions. You know, if they last a couple of years, they last a couple of years. Or, you know what, I'm just going to thrift and yard sale all the furniture out here. And so I don't care if it gets beaten by the sun, you know, just as long as I can sit out there with my book when I want to, and it's not a big production, try to set yourself up in whatever way you um, decorate your outdoor space in a way that it is as trouble-free as possible and as accessible to you as possible. Because, hey, look, you know, we're all busy. And the idea we joke about like the chairs inside that look so great and comfortable and would be so great to sit on if we had the time, you know, we're trying to encourage everyone and ourselves to take the time. But if, if there's a barrier to entry, so to speak, if it's hard, if you have to go into a um, bin and pull out all the cushions every time, you're probably not going to do it. Well, it's so interesting you say that because what you just said happened to me. We had a day bed on our back porch for a long time, and I know you've you've seen pictures of it. Mm. Um, but it's got but we use the day bed as kind of a sofa back there, which means you have to have four pillows deep on the back so that you can sit and you're you're uh you know and you don't feel like a four year old where your legs don't touch the ground. I always feel like that, but okay. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so there's always pillows, so you're sitting a little closer to the edge, right? But then you can take them off and and nap. You know, if, right. you, if you, or somebody can sleep there if they want overnight. So that's what we had on our back porch. So I think there were, um, I think about 16 pillows and Whoa. they were indoor pillows. Well, I, right. I shouldn't say they were indoor, they were indoor outdoor, whatever, but I put linen on them. So they really needed to go inside when we weren't using it. So all winter, where am I going to, at the farm, it's not a big house. What am I going to do with 16 pillows? I mean, they were thrown in the floor in the living room, or maybe we'd throw them oh in the bathtub, but gosh. then you couldn't use the bathtub. In the bathtub. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. I mean, they were just, they were a big pile that we would walk around all <laughs> winter. And I'm going to be honest with you, it was just too much trouble to put them on. And then I had a cover for the mattress, uh -huh. you know, to keep it safe, but then I'd have to clean that off. That yeah. would get dirty and... I just, it was too much. So I took it off and now I don't have to deal with that anymore. Thank goodness. Because it, so you really can be, I mean, I totally was a slave to it. So it can happen. It happened to me. Don't do that. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I, I had spent years because those outdoor pillows, even it's just a toss pillow, they're not cheap. I mean, you look around and if you're getting the, the sunbrella and something that really is going to hold up against the elements, you know, and I think these were an investment. You know, I just bought six of these and gosh darn it, you know, I'm going to keep them and I would cover them and then I would tie them on so the wind didn't blow them on or I put them away and I had a big bag for them. And then, Gosh, and then I just one day I was just like, oh, 
I'm not doing this anymore. It, I'm going to just be free of them and I'm going to enjoy what I have. And if it lasts, it lasts, you know, who knows? I could get run over by a bus next week. And at least I got to sit outside and enjoy a nice tea and a magazine and my pretty backyard. So I encourage everyone to, <laughs> to be free from the burdens of your uh, outdoor decor and just kind of roll with it and enjoy it. If you can, a really beautiful thing to add is some sort of water element. And I'm you think I'm joking, but I mean, this could be like a sprinkler. It could be just the littlest thing. Adding well, there's so sort- many, there's so many tabletop little tabletop, uh, water fountains too. Right. Yeah. There really are. You know, some of the smaller fountains, I will tell you in my experience, I've had trouble with the pumps and drains and all of that. And that became more trouble than it's worth. So I made mine into a succulent fountain filled with succulents and rocks. But, you know, if you, uh, have some sort of way that you can add a little water. We used to have swimming pools in prior houses. We don't have a swimming pool in this house. And I'm actually very glad we chose not to go that route. So that is obviously, a, you know, the ultimate water element. And you might have some water flowing from the pool to uh, the hot tub or something like that. It's spectacular. But seriously, you could get just something really small, even if it's a bird bath. And you just have still water in it and the birds get to splash around it. It's just lovely to have a water element in your yard somewhere. Oh, absolutely. And something I like just as much as a water element is a hammock. Oh, yeah. They are so comfortable. And I love, uh, there's one, I think it's called maybe a Mayan, but I have one that's got the uh, crocheted kind of... uh, Oh, what would you call it? Kind of a, a well, a crocheted edge that's really pretty. Mm-hmm. That looks very uh, inviting, and those are fun to hang. So, uh, you know, we love putting up a hammock, and it's not that it doesn't take that long to set up a hammock. I don't think that's quite the same, and they fold up nicely, and you throw it someplace small. But I think that's very worth having if you can fit that in your patio somewhere. I think you'd really like that. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pants at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story. The dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter Jennifer Grant and ex-wife Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. 
You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Another thing that you can add to your patio deck or porch decor are garden stools. We talk about garden stools inside a lot. So let's use them for the purpose they were originally intended. Let's use them in the garden. So you can have them as seating, side tables, or even just a pop of color. Uh, They come in, gosh, I think almost every color in the rainbow. Uh, A client of mine, we just got this really pretty teal colored one for inside her house. So that's sort of her pop color. And then she liked it so much. She said, well, what if we got a few for outside? I was like, yeah. So she just ordered four more and we're going to put them all around her yard. And she has these big sliding doors. So you, you're going to be able to see the inside to the outside. And so the teal is going to be, you know, her pop color going to be circulating all around the backyard as it does inside. So I, that's a wonderful uh, way to add color, add charm and to uh, an area that's big or small. I love garden stools. And it's, you're right. They are so versatile. You can use them inside, outside, use them as extra seating, use them as a side table. They are just perfect. They're small. They go about anywhere. And what a great thing to use really anywhere you need something special. So I'm, I'm with you on that one. Let me say one more thing before you go on about the garden stools. You know, a garden stool has no moving parts and it's made normally of ceramic and with glaze on it, sometimes cement. Okay. So there's, there's really nothing special about one as compared to the other, except for perhaps the color or the design. But there are such a range of prices. Yes. From, I have seen garden stools for over $300 which is the silliest thing really, because, you know, you, there are things that you really need to be spending money on, like maybe these outdoor umbrella pillows that will stand up to the elements or a great uh, umbrella base, something like that for outside. But you do not need to be spending more than, let's say, 50 to $70 on a garden stool, in my opinion. Just keep looking. If you have a certain color that you want, I bet you there's a lower price one in that same color family out there somewhere on the internet. I think that's a great idea because it is all about where you're shopping and knowing who has good prices, who doesn't. And it's like you said, uh, it's not really something electronic where if you buy the cheaper version, you know, you're going to get... Jip, no, it's pretty much it the same product is. no matter where you buy it. So yeah. what a great. You no, know, for my client, I mean, that's, mm-hmm. you know, I've seen this in my life and my own garden stools, but then it was just brought to my attention again. I showed her the general, I, saw, I came in, a catalog came in. I saw this particular garden stool and I ripped it out for, you know, just to show her next time I saw her, uh, have a look at this. Do you like it? But we're going to find a cheaper version. It was $270 plus shipping. And I bet the shipping would have been expensive because it's a big bulky item. And she's a big overstock shopper. So we found another one in the exact same color. And I actually like the design better. Might even, oh, I was going to say, might even be the same one. It could even be the same one, but I mean, it could be, right? It really depends. And so we got it overstock and, uh, you know, you get those coupons from them all the time. I think she got some, they always give you some weird amount off. She got like 18% Uh, off or something. Yeah, I got, yeah, that's what I just got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what about, Mm -hmm. go ahead. Are you finished with that? No, I'm done. Okay. All right. So I got all uh, excited about the garden stool. I know. I know. Well, I know that I'm done. That they're, they, you do get very excited. I do like them a lot. Yes. Garden stools. Uh, another thing to think about are the sounds. So I love some wind chimes. Isn't that, do you ever use wind chimes? I think they're really a nice to have as long as they're I not. Like, I like wind chimes. I don't know. They're kind of like dream catchers for me. Like, I don't really like them. Well, is that okay? I just don't it's really okay. like sure, them. Yeah, I mean, I like the sound every once in a while you hear it, but uh, I, well, know, here's, it's like here's all the, the caveat. time. Well, right. It, How do you have wind chimes anyway? It must be so like. It must be cacophonious by you. No, with the wind well, we had well, we had to take them down, but I, <laughs> because it was too much, and then it went all night long. Clink, right, clink, right. Clink. You're like, Shut but if you don't it. have a lot of wind and it's not going off all the time, right. I mean, it is nice. It's charming. It is nice to have. So, you know, I mean, and so if it's not going off all the time, and some of them sound better than others, so I'm just saying it's 
nice to have a pleasant sound. So if you do not have a water feature, a fountain, that might be some other way to add a nice sound, but definitely check into how it exactly sounds to make sure it is something you're going to enjoy hearing a lot of. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. Definitely. Um, But that is a really good point about sound and adding some uh, internal, if you will, sound like sounds that are emanate from your yard. So whether it's a water sound or a wind chime sound or um, using planting material in a smart way to block out sound. So if you're on a busy street or your neighborhood is as busy and loud, or if you've got kids next door or the boy down the block is learning to play the drums, things like that, you'd be surprised how effective uh, planting materials, particularly hedging materials. So I'm talking about, you know, tall plants that will could grow, you know, 10 feet tall or something like that, how much they can help keep the sound out that you don't want coming in. Well, and speaking of keeping sound out, sometimes there's some views you don't want to have either. I, while we're in the city, the houses are on either side of us. I mean, I think we could jump from our roof to the neighbor's roof and I don't, and I'm not a long jumper. I mean, it's just that close. So, you know, when you're on our back porch, you just see this wall, you know, a few feet away and it's nice to have something to block that. So you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and find some material to use, kind of like some sort of trellis or something to uh, to block that view. Or you can even buy something pre-made that you can, you know, have a vine on or something that would block the view. So that's something you can do as well. Or curtains would also help. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of innovative ways. I mean, that's kind of like, you know, a necessity is a mother of invention. That's kind of how I came up with the idea with the meshing and the jasmine growing up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that is on the yard side of our driveway. So we have the, the other side of the driveway, which is uh, adjacent to the neighbors. Ours are very close as well, Anita. We're, um, you know, in a, more of an urban setting too. Um So we have hedges growing there, but they, you know, they take a while to grow. So the jasmine is really doing a great job once you're in the yard, you know, like if you're standing in the yard, you can't really see over now that it's growing taller. So that's going to be great um, as that keeps going up on the trellising, but you can definitely um, add all sorts of things like that. Gardener supply is a great resource for uh, sort of maybe an eight foot wide trellis or lattice work that you could just even move around your yard if needs be, you know, if you couldn't get a whole bunch of them Um, or putting bigger trees in pots. Once a tree starts to really grow um, and getting wider, that can do a lot to block a view. Oh, that's a great idea. And another thing I wanted to talk about is my favorite accessory on a porch is a rocking chair. So, you know, think about having some comfortable seating. If you have some place that's comfortable to sit, I think you're more likely to go out there and enjoy it. So make sure you do have a comfortable place to sit. You could put, there's so many beautiful, beautiful outdoor seating options that are available now. And, um, you know, and one of, and then you can be creative. For example, I found a church pew in round top, of course, and, and that's on our back porch. So that's some ex- extra seating as well. That's not as comfortable as the rockers, but I, I do have it out there. That's so cool. I love that. And uh, we did add a fireplace here. Um, I just thought, oh, you know, the, I love that whole California. Is this a wood one thing. or did you do the gas? No, it's gas again, mm-hmm. sort of for the convenience factor. And there, there was some sort of moratorium on, wood burning fireplaces in our community. So I, you know, if you had one, you're okay to keep it, but you really could have put one of those in. So oh, we have a gas okay. one. Okay. Mm-hmm. I bought the fireplace. It's very simple from a company called Woodland Direct. And it actually gets shipped to you in like three pieces. Is it and a what, fireplace or a fire pit? It's a fireplace. Oh, nice. And it's very simple. It's white sort of stucco. Um, In saying white stucco, you might think, oh, it's sort of a Mediterranean look. It's really not. The the design of it is so simple and sort of squared off. I thought it just really went well with the house. And then instead of buying the logs, we're using the glass shards, the glass rocks that you can get. And people have probably seen those in different fireplaces. I just love the way that looks. A little bit more of a modern look. And 
it's so pretty when the fireplace is on. So if you are looking for an outdoor fireplace or a fire pit, they know that there are all sorts of options out there. Something you have to be really careful with, obviously, and you want to have the gas hookup done properly and pipes are coming into the fireplace and all that. Check out Woodland Direct. I, we, I have no affiliation with them other than I bought my fireplace from them, but you know, that's the only thing they do. Even if you just go on there and maybe read their blog or you get some information and then you can do with that what you will and maybe shop around other places. But buying fire pits from places like Wayfair and stuff kind of makes me a little nervous. Like it's fire, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> so it's like, I would be careful. So I, they're not I, shipping it on fire. I know you. they're not shipping it on fire and stuff, but they're you know, not just igniting like it what it's made it of and you know, how all the parts are, you know, you, that you don't want something like that to go wrong and have gas leaking, even if it is outside. So I've definitely, I think Woodland Direct is a good resource to check out. And I, I love our fireplace. Well, um, I have a fantasy mm-hmm. item I want for my porch. Oh, do tell. One of those hanging day beds. Have you seen them? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. How much more can you fit on this porch? Well, I know. We've got a pew. We've got a dining room table, a china cabinet, and now a hanging one. Well, I know. I may not have room for it, but I said it's a fantasy. But I guess you could. I mean, if you took something out, you could fit it, right? Oh, yeah. No, I've got room for it. Yeah, I just just moved something uh, out or elsewhere. No, they're beautiful. I love them. And I just love the idea of the swinging. You know, you really do have to, you know, you can't put it too close to the railing or right. too close to something because the whole point of it is you to really enjoy it. You really need to be able to let it swing. Right. But I just, that just, that sounds so relaxing. I feel like I could really take a good nap in one of those. I know you're not a napper, but I could not nap. I'm, I know, but I, but love, I could sit I there swinging around. I might get a little nauseous though. No, my mom had one of those at um, the, the house when they, their last she like lived it? in New York. Oh yeah. It was beautiful. But um, I don't think I sat out there that much because I was kind of like, I don't know, in law school or something. And I wasn't around that much, but, and my mom was always running around doing something like hosing something off or something like she should have, <laughs> she should have enjoyed it more. But yeah, it was beautiful. It was really pretty. And that she had a pretty wreath that she always made a pretty wreath for the seasons that she put over it How fun. on the wall, you know, but it was, I guess, attached to the ceiling and then a way enough that you could have a little swing to it. Well, I, and you have to have a lot of room for it. I mean, really, if you don't have room for that, you'd really need to, but you could do the swing, the old time porch swing. Right. Would be an alternative as well. Right. But I just thought what would be the ultimate tool of laziness? And I'm thinking I would like to take a nap on the swinging thing. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. You know what I think the the ultimate tool is <laughs> with what? respect to everything we're talking about <laughs> is just making a little time, making a little time to go out there and sit. And if you try to plan it in your day, and this is, I didn't always do this and I'm not always successful at it. Like last weekend, I was going to read, uh, I'm reading a book now, an actual book, not just a magazine and not an online thing. And I was going to take my book and I was going to have, depending on the time of day, I got out there either an iced tea or a glass of wine. Are you going to tell us what you're reading? Well, yeah. Yeah. I can tell you that, but the day got away from me and I didn't get to do it, but I was really trying. I was gunning for it. That was my goal. And I didn't make it. And that's okay. It started to get dark and everybody was hungry and it was time to start start dinner and all of that. So that slipped away from me, but I, it is going to my, be my goal. And this is off the topic of outdoor decor, but I have started to do a little something on Sunday mornings and maybe, you know, it's not a new thing at all, but it's kind of a new thing for me is I, it's even if it's just 15 or 20 minutes, I'm taking 15 or 20 minutes in the morning on Sundays before the day gets rolling and I'm just sitting with my cup of tea. I'm not, you know, undoing the dishwasher or anything like that. I read whatever I feel like reading, or I look at whatever I feel like looking and three doggies jump up with me and we just have, and I feel totally recharged. Wow. Inevitably with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. 
Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. And so I'm I think wish- that's a great idea. I, yeah, I think and I'm really trying to that. do it. I started maybe a month ago. I haven't done it every Sunday because some, you know, one Sunday something happened. But and then, and so if I don't get to do that, I'm really gunning for a particular spot. How long does this, How long do you take? 15, 15 minutes? or 20 minutes. Well, you know? like, gee, we should try to do this every day. Yeah, well, yeah, that would be nice. But you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're going to make all the effort to create this beautiful outdoor space, it shouldn't just be because you're having a birthday party or you're having mm-hmm. a barbecue. True. Do it for your family. Do it for yourself. Do it for the every day. Uh, style it in a way that is comfortable for you and that stuff that is a little, you know, pretty much carefree, worry-free, or choose not to worry about it and just use it. Because the time is, particularly if you live in a place where there's four seasons, I mean, the time is pretty fleeting. I think once you do some of these things, you're going to be so excited about it, you are going to go out and enjoy it. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so too. Well, anything else? Well, I do have a crush for today. And um, because this was a reader uh, a suggested episode. That's our reader question was the whole okay. episode. Okay. So that was, you know, right. thank you again so much for this great suggestion, Debbie B. And I hope that yes. uh, we uh, gave you a lot of good tips and everybody else. Yes, uh, thanks, my, Debbie. my crush today is a white garden stool under 50 bucks. Link in the show notes. Go check it out. So my uh, crush is something I found as we were cleaning the porch And I thought about using some harsh chemicals to clean the porch railing. And I, we just couldn't bring ourselves to do that. You know, we really try to use non-toxic cleaning products in place of the, you know, the more toxic ones that kill plants and, you know, they're not good for people or anybody. Uh, But anything, anyway, something that we use to help uh, get the dirt off in addition to our natural cleaning products is we found one of these, um, spray wands that kind of convert your hose sort of into a pressure washer. Now, you know, it's not, it doesn't, it's not the same thing as a pressure washer. So I don't want to build up the expectations too high, but Mm -hmm. it, it, um, it, it, it's as close as you're going to get, you know, to a pressure washer from your garden hose because it just really sprays a very concentrated stream of water and it's a higher speed and pressure than, you, you would normally get from a garden hose, from a regular pistol grip. 
So I think that really helped us with the cleaning chores. I'll include a link to it, but uh, yeah, I think I just, but it's not, it's not the same as a pressure washer. So I don't mean to imply that it's, you know, it's not worth $300. Let's put it that way. But it, I, it did a really nice job. I think if your expectations are reasonable, you'll be very happy with it. So it's something that you attach to the end. You take off your um, sprayer nozzle and then right, you just take off on. your nozzle and then you, yeah. And then you uh, uh, screw this one on the end of the hose. And then you can adjust uh, the spray, whether it's wide or narrow, and then you can adjust how much water is coming out. Oh, so it's somewhere in between what you would get on like the high spray on your it's, hose and a pressure uh, washer. It's somewhere in between. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Well, that sounds good. I might get that for my driveway because I feel like we just uh, like um, there's some. The, yeah, the I don't know. Paint that it's splatter gonna... on it and stuff like okay. that. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to get that off. I'm just saying, I think, and here's the thing too, you don't really, I don't like using a pressure washer on my house because it does just peel the paint oh, off yeah. like crazy. Oh, yeah. So this isn't that much pressure. So it's it's going to be a lot better for the paint on your house. Oh, but that's just know? good to know about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if you had mildew or mold on your driveway, I don't think this is going to get it up. Okay. No, I'm not a miracle worker, you know. No, it's just passing along the information. Just passing it along. Good deal. So, yeah. Well, I'm so excited to go outside now. So I yeah, can yeah, go because too. I've got to go, go work on my porch now. Yeah. Anyway, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Uh, if you have tips for us to share or a topic that you want us to cover or a question that you'd like us to address, please email us at decoratingtipsandtricks at gmail.com. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home and porch and patio. <laughs> Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult with Anita and I. We can't wait to talk to you.